Hi guys, welcome to Smith Farm 1914. It's been a minute since I have made a video of any sort. Um, it's just been a, a busy ride here at the Smith Farm, but tonight my garden is like full bloom, going crazy. So I thought, let's do a garden tour. So here are our garden beds. We have four of them. They're made out of old railroad ties. Um, we've had this garden for about three years and these three were just added this year and it has been a game changer um, as far as what I'm able to grow here now, which is fantastic. So I have lots of green peppers, some marigolds, we have some celery, some more marigolds, lots of cucumbers, and then lettuce carrots, <laughs> um, broccoli, which has been bolting, um, and then some cabbages and three onions, your typical yellow, white, and red. Um, we also have our electroculture stick. If you haven't looked into electroculture um, gardening, it's very, very interesting. In my opinion, I truly believe <laughs> that the copper has helped. Um, I have grown the biggest onions that I have ever grown <laughs> um, to date and my cabbages were like six pound cabbages. So the idea is it takes the electricity that's in the air and grounds it into your soil and provides electricity for your plants. I'm not really sure. We have tomatoes. Um, I'm growing Roma and then big boys are down there. This year we did a hog panel, which is not something that we have done before. Um, I love it for growing um, purposes. I just use like a little tape gun, um, which I have on my Amazon storefront. I absolutely love it. It literally works like a stapler and I just staple them to the hog panel. Um, the one thing I am finding out though is it's kind of hard to get my tomatoes out that are like right next to the hog panel. They kind of get a little bruised, but I'm not super worried about that. And we have basil, which is bolting. <laughs> um, I did four things of basil and every year I do that to myself and every year I'm like, I don't need that much basil, but when will I learn? And then I have holy basil, um, which is a fantastic medicinal herb. It's really good for revitalizing energy. It's something that I love to take in a tea form after I have gone through some sort of like fever, virus, um, of that sort. So it gives you, reboosts your energy. I absolutely love that. I will never not have my garden full of holy basil. Then we have my potatoes, which we've been digging into, our corn, which we've been digging into, all of our zinnias. Some of my favorite ones that we grew this year, this is a Oklahoma salmon. Um, they produce like the most beautiful peachy pinks I have ever seen. They're absolutely stunning. I love them. Then we also grew some queen limes and those are just really fun. So I love zinnias, they're so easy and that's why I love them. They take little to no maintenance and I, um, I don't stress about it. I just throw the seeds in the ground and water it, which is my type of gardening. So this is probably the one bed that I nurture the most. Um, we use everything in this bed for medicinal purposes. I have a huge apothecary um, herbalism has completely shifted our mindset and our way of life, so I absolutely love this. If you are here from my Instagram page, you know I did a garden tour back in like June, and I walked you through every single herb and detailed form of like what they're good for. I'll just kind of do a quick run through, but if you want to, you can check that out. It's always in a highlight, um, and I talk more in depth about what the herbs are really good for. So first up, we have lemon balm, which is great for teas. Um, it's really good for uh, anti-anxiety, calming effects. We have comfrey. This is my first year with comfrey. Um, I use this in my herbal tallow. It's fantastic for wounds and um, skin 
resell cell regeneration it's um in a, it's truly an amazing plant um, i'm super glad i planted this this will come back every year hopefully um here we have some l campaign it looks a little beaten up something has eaten it they say that if you have bugs in your garden then you have a pretty good ecosystem so i'm not going to complain about that so l campaign is an amazing plant um, i have said before um if it is a little bit furry, it's good for respiratory health and El Campaign's fantastic for coughs and um, like the koopy goopy coughs, the wet coughs that you just want to get it up. Um, we use El Campaign a lot in the winter time. So I knew I needed to grow this and glad I did. Um, here we have some skull cap which is a wonderful sedative. It's super good to calm you down. Its calming effects are unreal for um, anxiety. Its calming effects are amazing. You do need to use it within 30 minutes of like um, taking the plant, generally speaking. So yeah. And then we have Spilanthes. This little plant is really amazing um, for toothaches. You take a little piece of this Put it in your mouth and it'll actually numb your entire mouth um it's a really fun one to have and like show people <laughs> about it's i find it hilarious watching people's mouths go numb and them being like oh my god some yarrow here and this is fantastic for fevers it's actually our main fever go-to in our household we don't really use tylenol i generally treat our boys' fevers with yarrow um, it's also fantastic. It's probably most well known for its wound healing effects. It'll completely stop bleeding if you have a deep, um, a deep cut. This row right here is Echinacea. Echinacea is an amazing antibiotic. If anything, when you think of Echinacea, you should be thinking of your herbal antibiotics. We also take Echinacea at the beginning of feeling like you're kind of getting the ick um, for like fevers and whatnot. If you take it at the beginning, beginning of an illness it'll most likely knock it in the nip it in the butt then we have some lavender it's not going so well <laughs> chives chives rosemary which is great for all sorts of things um hair um and then also we have some thyme which is good for coughs and um cold and flu i actually have a whole blog post on like thyme and the uh, wonderful things it can do for your your uh, cold ailments and your body. Um, this is self heal, and it pretty much does just that. And then we also have um, nasturtium. I lost all my flowers. There's like one or two. She really took over on this. Um, but nasturtium is really good. It's good for your eyesight, and it's also a really good liver and um, gallbladder stimulant. Um, we have some St. John's wort. We love St. John's wort. Um, it's, I actually use it in a um, tincture for uh, seasonal depression. Actually, I use St. John's wort with chamomile and with lemon balm. This is chamomile and it's good for calming effects and babies. Um, I usually use a catnip and chamomile when my kids are teething and then I use St. John's wort chamomile and lemon balm for like a seasonal depression or anti-anxiety anti-depression tincture which I end up having to take often in the winters because the winters here are brutal <laughs> um if you are new here I'm new here too <laughs> we'll see if I can do this YouTube to me seems a little bit intimidating. Um, Instagram's generally where I hang, but I was like, well, I haven't shot anything on our YouTube channel in a hot minute, so I might as well. But we're about ready to head inside and enjoy the evening. It's so beautiful. So we're gonna finish up on some watering and get ready for bed. But I'm glad you're here. If you um, want to learn more about herbalism and want to learn more about all the things, you can subscribe here. I'll try to keep up. And then also um, my Instagram has a ton of information on the highlights. Um, anything from herbalism to food preservation to the daily lives to 
all the things. So anyways, glad you're here.